hope you're well. So I have run out of beer, which is a bit of a shame because I've had some truly lovely beers for the last year. But that's okay, because it all kind of works out really well. Normally around Christmas time is when most brewers start brewing because well, they get it for Christmas and they're like, why not? Then they get the bug and they never stop. But um, we're going to be doing a beer kit, but we're going to be twisting it up a bit. So we've done a very simple beer kit, a light Mexican cerveza. You don't really need to add like extra malt to it and extra hops because, well, it's a Mexican light beer. Then we did the Simply Improved Beer Kit, where we uh, basically double batched beers, two light, cheap, horrible kits, and made a actually fairly good beer. And we also did a Patreon beer, where I made a Braggot, and we're going to be doing a variation on that. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing, there's no point going much into it, let's just get on with it before I start going mad. So the concept is pretty straightforward, we've got a kit, and maybe you're not that you know, you're not really a fan of whatever it is, you can put a twist on it by mixing in whatever you want. You can mix in fruits. Whoa, fruit beer. Anyway, we're not talking about that, we're talking about this. This is the caramelized honey beer, and I can already hear some of the comments ringing in my ears how you should never heat honey, <gasps> never mind caramelize it or even burn it. And uh, here's the thing, it's cheap honey. Like really, it's one pound fifteen a jar, it has, it's just generic honey. If I was using, say, Manuka honey, Active 10, I wouldn't caramelize it because, well, it's really stupidly expensive and it has its own flavor. Again, if I was using something like Honeydew honey, it has a really nice flavor. I wouldn't need to caramelize it, but this stuff is uh, generic honey. It just tastes like random honey, nothing special about it. I'm gonna caramelize it and it's gonna be good. So uh, what I've got is three jars of honey and I'm going to be adjusting with some sugar. If you don't want to use sugar, don't. Yeah. Add in an extra two jars of honey and you should be somewhere around the magical 5% mark. Ish. Uh, honey is a bit hit and miss because, well, the bees, the bees, they don't listen, they just, you know, they do their own thing. Not all of this honey is going to be fermentable. So uh, this should be pretty fun. Now the only addition I'm going to be adding in, because I have them, are some citra hops to make a kind of caramelized citrus and a beer. So yeah, basically. Yeah. You don't have to add them in if you don't want to. You could even just use some lemons to make caramel lemon beer. So if you didn't know, because we're using set honey, we have to heat the honey up to get it out of the jar. Otherwise it's like trying to remove concrete. So uh, just dump in the jars for about five minutes. Nothing needs to be sterilized at the minute, just clean because this part, we're, uh, we're applying heat, so that sterilizes it. So I've got my trusty gas stove and a thick bottom pan. You can use a thin bottom pan, but uh, you've got to watch it more and it doesn't distribute the heat as evenly. A thick bottom one works really well. So uh, I'm just gonna go through. Hopefully this is warm enough. So, uh, of course, it was nice and hot. Uh, these have been sitting around for a bit. So yeah, maybe we should use boiling water. Oh well, never mind. Let's just uh, carry on like it's all gone well. This is a solid block. So if you didn't know, because we're using set honey, we have to heat the honey up to get it out of the jar. Otherwise, it's like trying to remove concrete. So uh, just dump in the jars for about five minutes. Nothing needs to be sterilized at the minute. Just clean because this part, we're, uh, we're applying heat, so that sterilizes it. So I've got my trusty gas stove and a thick bottom pan. You can use a thin bottom pan, but uh, you've got to watch it more and it doesn't distribute the heat as evenly. So we're back again. We're gonna try this again. I just showed you how not to do it. Uh, this honey is like concrete. Who'd have known? It looks like it wants to come out, so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's still pretty thick. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's just gonna have to do. So I'm gonna battle with these jars. That is like concrete. That is just solid. Yeah. Okay, 
Do it yourself. Set, honey, set. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got it. took a little bit longer to get the honey out of the jar. Obviously, I didn't eat it for long enough. Mm. But I do have a bit of honey. Mm. Good stuff. So, I'm gonna put this on a nice medium heat, let it come up to the temperature. I'm probably gonna have to adjust it because it will start filming. If you're using runny honey, you have to do it on a low heat. Uh, but set honey has less moisture, so we're basically halfway there already. So while I'm waiting for this to come up to the boil, I can go and rinse my five gallon fermenter. I've already started the sterilizing process using thin bleach and dish soap. Uh, this one is Magnum. Not bad. So uh, I'm going to go do that because, well, it needs to be sterilized. So we're pretty much there. The foam on the top of the uh, hump of the honey, that's what it was, has almost come up to the perfect color. Now the color I'm looking for is the color of honeycomb. Uh, that is my preferred color. You can go a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. It's really up to you. You can even go black. I mean, it's, it's you know, personal preference, but um, we're, we're nearly there on that. And in the meantime, because I've done this a few times before, I've done it nice and slow and a low heat, I can leave it. I don't suggest that you do that, especially if you've never done it before. Keep an eye on it. Uh, but I have finished sterilizing my five liter water, five liter, five gallon water container. I've sterilized my side and my hands by default. That's why this is all there. I've even sterilized a uh, stereo spoon using boiling water. Scorching works the same. So uh, we're just about ready. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my hops, my citra hops, because I want some citrus added into it. And because these have not been sterilized, because they've been sitting in my freezer for a while, I'm actually going to be using half a tablespoon, which is one and a half teaspoons. Saves weighing it out, that way I know, of these pellets. And I'm going to add them in to the honey, gently. Don't want it to boil over. And that's going to be my hops. They're going to be sterilized and they're going to be infusing and it's just about to be turned off, so we're all good. So I suppose we should start preparing the beer kit. So uh, occasionally I get asked the question that someone has had a beer kit and they've had it for years, but uh, you know they're not sure if they should use it or not. The answer is yes, you can. If you're worried, you can always boil the malty stuff and just replace the yeast. I mean, this is ale yeast, because well, it's so easy, because lager yeast you have to faff around with. So uh, you can buy just Young's brew yeast this stuff lasts even when it's out of date for, well, going on the, what do you call it? Brewing with bread yeast video. I used yeast that was like three years out of date. Uh, it did die on year four, so probably best to use it within three years after the sell-by date. We've got the destructions, we don't need that. So we're gonna crack open the can, and uh, we need to heat this first because it's a bit like honey. So in it goes. I've just boiled the kettle, my trusty kettle, and uh, dump in some boiling water. I'm going to leave it for five minutes and uh, turn that off now. We've had the perfect color and it's really smelling beautiful. <laughs> so the mold extract has been in the boiled water for, well, five or so minutes. It should be plenty hot enough. It feels it. So I just finished taking off the outside label. It really should make these easier to come off. Anyway, take the trusty can opener and let's, let's see what we got. Now is the great time to put it all together. And because we're not making mead, we can actually dump this straight in the fermenter, which uh, I'm just gonna clear up. Make room. There we go. Now we're done. So we're gonna start off by adding in a half a kilo of sugar. 500 grams. There it goes. Since we're going to be adding in all the hot stuff. Now, my fermenter is clean and rinsed. It smells fresh, but not bleachy. Very important to remember that. If it smells like bleach, rinse it for longer. So I've got my can of malt. Oh, nice warm malt. And I'm going to pour that in first. And 
we can rinse this out with water in a second. Now I've got my hot caramel honey goodness. And we can add that in. It's all, do it carefully. You can tell it's got a nice dark color to as it started. And we can also rinse this out with some hot water. So uh, I suppose I need some hot water. So I filled my kettle with hot water because well, my kettle has been boiled, so it's already been sterilized. Might as well keep on with the sterilizing. So in goes my hot water. And into the pan too. And some into the remaining jars of honey. If you do it before and then add it in, it takes forever for the water to uh, burn off so it will caramelize. Here we go. Now everything's mixed. It's a simple case of dumping all the liquid in. And hopefully that honey hasn't set like cement. Because it does like to do that sometimes. Here it goes. Have to say, those citra hops really smell good. Like, really good. Kid doesn't smell bad either. And now to stir. Yeah, let's stir for a while. So I'm fairly confident this is all mixed in now. Gave it a really good beating and uh, covered in sugar. Good stuff. So the only thing left to do now is to top this up with cold water. So uh, I'm gonna use my kettle because well, it is sterile. This is going to take a minute. And there we go. So it is very, very slightly over the 23 litre mark. <gasps> That's okay. We're working ish. Uh, I know that this bucket is accurate as well as my other one. I did test it. Um, probably best to do that if you've got a new brewing bucket if you've never measured how much water it holds. So now just give it a nice stir to make sure this is all mixed together. Oh yeah. Right, I'm gonna stick the lid on and we'll be back in about five minutes so we can test it with the hydrometer when all this foam has disappeared. Ooh, that is good. So I've let the foam die down and I've got my hydrometer all ready to go. So let's dump it in and let's see what we're gonna get. So uh, we're using honey and honey is a little bit fickle. It could be lots of fermentable sugar, may not have quite as much. Each jar is slightly different, though it was all like cement, which wasn't helpful. So we did add a bit of sugar in to bump it up because um, well, I've made a beer like this before and it turned out four and a half percent. So adding the plain sugar, just make sure I get hopefully around 5% when it's finished. So uh, that has now finished. Just give it a <gasps> badness, just to make sure we get an accurate reading. And according to this, it is reading 8%. So that works out as 1.050. I'm just gonna double check, 8%. Yeah, 1.050, closest that we're gonna get. So, that is good. So, I was just about to put the lid on. It's been one of those days. So we've got our bag of yeast. You know what we're gonna do? Dump it in. So carefully and delicately. So now will we uh, just stick the lid on and leave one side open so the gas can going escape. And that's just done, we're finished. We have created caramel honey beer with citra hops, which I think is gonna be really, really nice, but we'll have to find out. So we'll be back in about two weeks time. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Give me some suggestions, some strange brews as well. I do like these suggestions. You never know, I may do one. So uh, check out some of the other videos and carry on homebrew. See you later. <laughs>